Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Brood War ladder cast. We've got Quickly spawning here in the bottom right-hand corner. Barracks in the top left, and Quickly is a guy that we've seen a little bit recently. He's not somebody who's been on our radar for long, though. Uh, recently, this week, had a cast with him that I thoroughly enjoyed versus Hero. I'll put a little link here if you guys want to go check that out fantastic game from him uh, versus hero was so much fun to watch and uh, to cast as well so I'm looking forward to another great game from this relatively unknown player here I even talked to dude nerd he really doesn't know who this guy is either so you know he's gonna start to build his legacy here in the uh, on the ladder cast, and maybe we'll see him someday in KCM. Maybe we'll see him someday in ASL. Who knows? Anything can happen. As long as you've got the skills, this is, uh, in a lot of ways, a totally a meritocra meritocracy in that case. And if you've got the skills, if you've got the gameplay, if you've got the hard work and ethics to play this game at the highest level, then you can make it anywhere uh, in, into any of these tournaments. There are no walled gardens in uh, the Brood War Pro scene. So we've got quickly here sending one zealot across the map. And while I want to just maybe kind of uh, edit what I said there, uh, that there's no walled gardens, because there are certain things, certain aspects of Brood War that are uh, kind of like a walled garden, which is... Uh, if you have the friends, if you know the people who play Brood War at the highest level, if you're friends, for example, with someone like Barracks or Light, or you know these guys, you're going to have a much better time understanding the newest strategies. Not everybody is playing on the ladder, and some of the best players, in fact, are just going to be practicing with their friends and sharing their strategies uh, in a small circle. So with that all said... Get back to this game. We got one kill on that zealot. He managed to get the SCV as well, but he did get one marine there. Um, I don't think that's everything he was looking for, but that is a good start here. I didn't see Barracks throw down an eBay block, which is sometimes uh, kind of typical in this match. Uh, in these type of situations, his next zealot's going to run up this ramp here and start to chase the marines around, but one vulture does pop. Barrack's going to just opt to run away from this Zealot for as long as possible and rely on the Vulture Micro to pick that off. He does get that without losing any further Marines. So five Marines are out here. Is he going to start to push across the map with this? There's just one Dragoon here trying to get this kill on the SCV. He can't go too deep though. Quickly going to have to back off. Well, it chased a little bit. By five Marines, you have to... Evacuate this position. So, trying to lower that health on some of these Marines without losing too much HP. Can regain those shields, but the HP will be lost forever. Second Dragoon here. Making its way to the front. Robotics facility on the way now. We have that range just about done, and mine's going to be the follow-up. So, mine expand. Coming here out of barracks. Pretty standard stuff in the modern era. Gonna pick off one Marine, but the uh, Dragoon here at the back is getting quite low. You can see barracks is actually targeting that the best that he can with the Vulture to try and see if he can't pick that off. Two Vultures here at the front now with still four Marines. He could put a lot of damage on this. Going after that low HP Dragoon, he is gonna get it. Really nice play there by barracks and he might end up losing this one vulture. He does. But can he get the Dragoon as compensation? It's going down, getting lower and lower, and he will be able to finish that off. A little bit unfortunate to lose both your early Dragoons, but at least he got rid of that vulture before it could lay out all its mines. So, not the absolute worst trade in the world, but quickly is going to be sitting on the back foot a little bit here for a moment. Wondering whether there's going to be a follow-up push to this or not. SCV transition coming uh, over there to the natural. 
Oh boy, gotta target that mine. No, he didn't target the mine. He targeted the uh, dragoon there. Or tar targeted the vulture there, excuse me. Oh my god, these dragoons are so low. So, so low here. Great play from uh, Barracks. Just knocked that down and I don't know about this uh, This play out of quickly. This might be his, his weaker matchup here. Barracks is kind of pulling him apart right now. Uh, the Dragoon Micro not quite on par with some of these other really accomplished Protoss players. He's already lost a lot, and he's very, very low on these two Dragoons, so he can't really push out, and he's going to be on the back foot, as I said once again. Wow, a 6 minute 50 Nexus here. After killing off those Vultures and the Marines as well, realizing that Probably we're not going to see a push here for a, a little while. Um, the, that's some balls, though. These are really low dragoons, and we lost a lot of dragoons in this early game. We're on... Okay, we did add two more gates. And I think it's just a an observer. So three gate observer into expand. Reaver's going to follow that up. But what will Barracks do if he spots this third base coming up so early here? I think he might be tempted to take a, a third base of his own he's got a third factory on the way but i don't think he needs too much more than three factories to actually get a third base up and online here he sees this and what is his immediate response here as the missile turrets on the way still a long way from reaver coming across the map just not quite there yet i haven't even got the uh shuttle out so, it's a pretty delayed Reaver at this point. The turrets are already up there. He could have actually thrown down an extra factory or maybe a CC with the amount of turrets that he's building. He's going to build four turrets. And the Reaver is just now starting. So, maybe delaying his stuff a little bit here. Uh, be maybe possibly because he doesn't have the scanners. And he can't really scan and find out when that Reaver's coming. So, he's just... Kind of got to assume it's coming here pretty soon. Dragoons on the right-hand side. They're chasing away four tanks and two Marines with two... What are these? One HP? There's six HP on that and three HP on the other one. That's crazy. That is... Um, that is really wild. Okay, they're finally going to turn around realizing that there was... Like, eight HP between the two of those. Kind of... Kind of crazy see the mouse chasing the elephant there but now we've got tanks on the high ground quickly doesn't have a lot of stuff here but he does have a reaver will he be able to utilize that to break this position zealot dropped in a great spot here reaver does get a beautiful shot off has to wait another few seconds here for the next tank shot can he dodge it no he takes one hit on the reaver Gonna bait the mines here. Tank shot actually deals quite a bit of damage to his own vultures, and he will be able to back up, pick up a dragoon, and drop the reaver on top of this force here. All right, not gonna go for the drop there, but does dislodge the position on the hill here outside of the third base. Pretty well played overall by quickly dismantling that push, at least for now. Tank. Okay. Gonna eat one shot from the Reaver. And the second tank is picked off there on the backside. Very well done. Looks like we're gonna lose some probes at the third base, but nothing that quickly can't absorb here. Should be able to bring the Reavers back and start to clear this out. Vultures do manage to slip by into the main though. What was that dragoon doing? Sleeping on the job here. No scarabs in this Reaver either. So the uh Vultures are going to be able to run right by here. Losing quite a few probes in this corner now. Dude, this Reaver is taking forever to get over here and actually do something about it. Losing quite a few probes there. Down to 62, but on par with the Terran. And this third CC just started. So, I think we're still on curve here, actually, as quickly we're not going to be falling too far behind right now, but we're going to eat mines coming out of the natural. This one could be uh, a problem as well. This one here and this one. All problem mines here. 
which might end up getting stepped on in a moment. Reavers are going to be brought here to the front. Bridges are being controlled right now on both sides. And the third CC is getting ready to come out and land. But we should see a fourth base get started relatively soon. I would say before that third base lands, we should probably have a fourth base getting set up over here by quickly. Honestly, his um, his observers have not been very good this game. He needs to start moving those observers a little bit more fluidly to start clearing out some of these mines that are scattered around the map. Oh, switching into carrier right now. To starport carrier. I wonder when Barracks is going to find out about that because I don't think he's seen it just yet. Let's take a look at Barracks' side of the map. He's just pushing out here, taking that third base. Does he have uh, the option to take plus two right now? I don't see it. It seems like he's really delayed that plus two in favor of getting these factories out a lot quicker. So going up all the way to seven factory before taking the third. Um, I don't know if this is the right choice. I think I feel like this is a mistake right now. He's not scanning the main either. Uh, the third was so fast by quickly He didn't really have that many units to try and break barracks But I guess with barracks trying to push this right hand side and failing and losing a lot of his tanks He didn't feel confident enough To come out and take that third base quickly Before adding on so many factories And he's giving quickly a lot of time here to build up carriers um, some Goliaths have been incremented out. He's got seven on the way, so he must have scouted this. He must have seen this. And so he's getting ready to push forward here. Another scan at the front. Can he cross the bridges unmolested here? It's going to be tough. Great pick up there by quickly. Moving back just the minimum amount to not get hit by those tanks. Backing up once again, forcing into the siege. Oh! That could have been a big, big, big hit there. Jumping on top of the shuttle. Gonna lose both the Reavers there in a flurry of activity. Quickly not paying attention to that as Barracks just shoves forward here and takes control over the bridge area. Quickly really not having the numbers out here right now to start to deal with that, but... That's just because he is building into this massive carrier force. Four are out already. With more here on the way. Three more. Gonna go to seven in a matter of seconds. Two more uh, Reavers coming back from the front line, I guess. And the Reavers are gonna deal a lot of damage right now to some of these uh, Goliaths. But the ground army is starting to get cleared. Can the carriers start to come forward and actually kill anything? Should be able to get this tank at least. Maybe this one as well. The interceptor number is starting to get higher. But still a lot of Goliaths right now. No plus two. Critically, plus two Goliaths are where they start to deal with the interceptors pretty effectively. But at this point, with only plus one, the carriers can... Uh, Consume some of that damage. They can hold off some of that damage by just having a large number of interceptors Can fly in and get some kills on a few tanks here and there Without fear of losing every single interceptor interceptor now Some Vultures are gonna come running in here and the tank push is getting set up on this high ground on the right hand side tanks are gonna siege and A lot of Goliaths are mixed in here. Can he get some good scarabs to actually pick off a bunch of these Goliaths, or will he lose the Reavers before getting close enough? He's trying to pick off the tanks so that the Reavers can advance a little bit. They are going to start to get hit now, though, and it's very hard to get a Reavers to shoot up high ground. But it looks like he will end up losing these Reavers without getting too many hits. Running in now with the Zealots, dealing a little bit of damage. What is he building up here? Oh my god, a base going up. In the top right-hand corner for quickly. Trying to take a fourth base. He loses that Reaver. 
and barracks is bearing down on this base I'm gonna be losing the gas here momentarily the, re the uh, carriers getting targeted right now only 200 HP on that one and another shuttle falls there at the front dragoons are being forced back barracks doing a great job advancing on this position with relatively few tanks but Quite a lot of Goliaths to contest with these scares. It's mostly the air army which he's concerned about right now. That is a scary carrier force. Seven carriers, but with just two base economy, not as scary. Now, if he gets this base up and really running, that can start to flip. But I think that on three base, with a fourth coming up here soon, Barracks should be able to outproduce quickly here and overwhelm him slowly with the Goliath production. Moving northward here. Is he going to notice this base over in the top right? Looks like he has spotted that. Barrack's going to be able to pick off that base, I think, before the carriers can get back here to do anything about it. Quickly picking off the two cannons here. There's not a lot of probes to deal with. The carriers, where are they going to go? Wow, he was sending a ton of probes up there, but thinking better of it, he's going to send them back home now. And it really, kind of a one base Protoss at this point. Building a lot of interceptors and not much else. Going up to nine carriers now. What can quickly do with this huge air force? Can he wipe out this army? Or will he start to lose some of these carriers now? Some of these are getting targeted here by the Goliaths. But the Goliath number is lowering. Gonna go after the tanks now with the carriers picking them off before the goons come to engage. One carrier is gonna go down, dropping that count to eight. But the entire Terran force will fall here. Behind this, what does Barracks have? A lot of Goliaths here. A few tanks mixed in. This is the perfect carrier killing force here. As long as we don't have storms, well, we've got a lot of zealots ready. And zealots are really going to rip apart the Goliaths. If we don't have any uh, vultures with this, the zealots can do quite well. That's a lot of interceptors here. And where are those zealots? He needs to bring them forward to take this fight before all the interceptors are gone. A lot of interceptors are getting gunned down right now, and that count is getting lower and lower. Bringing forward the ground army is really important here. Quickly, what are you doing? All these zealots kind of sitting back here. He's going to bring them forward now. But is it too late? A lot of interceptors are on the way right now. He's going to try and pounce upon this army. Here we go. Diving on this. Zealots are getting up on top of the tanks and Goliaths. The tanks are trying to focus. Fire at these dragoons down. But the carriers are gunning down the tanks faster than they can target down those dragoons and zealots are doing a really good job tearing apart these goliaths the vultures making their way to the front here this is the missing piece of the army that barracks just didn't have moments ago but now has managed to grab those and send them to the front vultures are in this army whoa three dragoons i guess they were over here or something i'm not sure are now making their way over to this fourth base I'm going to try to prevent some mining there, but we'll get cleaned up by these mines. And now the carriers have to make a decision. We've got 10 carriers here. That's so many. But without interceptors, they're not going to be much use. We need more income to start building more interceptors out here. We're building five at a time. But we're using every single bit of money that we have right now. Vultures here trying to get over and stop the mining at the third base. But it looks like this vulture will get cleaned up. Dragons here in the middle. Excuse me, Goliaths in the middle of the map. Trying their best to trade with the carriers. Just picking off as many interceptors as they can. We're in that situation right now as a Terran. Where jumping upon the carriers actually doesn't matter all we need to do is just keep killing interceptors uh if we can jump on a carrier of course that's fantastic but killing off interceptors over and over and over again is eventually going to run our protoss opponent dry he's just now getting his third base online he's almost losing another carrier right now 
He's just barely able to produce interceptors, not to mention any sort of ground army. Well, he did manage to sneak out a reaver somehow. And that might help him against these uh, Goliaths here, which are trying to run forward. And it, does he have a... Okay, he does have a Scarab at least. Now the carrier's going to move over here to the right-hand side. Eight carriers still remain. And this is an open mineral field here. Where are all the Goliaths? Wow, we're really, really low on Goliaths right now. Is he actually going to end up losing this? He targets down the CC instantly. And a lot of these SCVs are going to start to fall. Coming around the side here with three Goliaths. Gonna attack this base? Dude, has he actually done it here quickly with too many carriers? And just not enough ground forces here for Barracks. He was mining on four bases for quite some time, whereas Quickly's never mined off of more than three bases. Hasn't scraped even a single mineral off of a fourth base here. Um, maybe like one or two. No, I don't, I don't know if you even got one return off of this space over here in the top right. But these carriers are just carrying him so hard. True to their name, the absolute carries of this game. Carriers almost winning the day here by themselves with plus three attack finished. It's no surprise, but it's shocking to see an ASL contender taken down potentially by quickly here. He's jumping forward, and I think it's... A foregone conclusion at this point. GG is called. Barracks taps out. And quickly takes another victory. Dude, quickly. Spoiler alert. Beat Hero. He beat Barracks. What else can this man do? He is a mystery to us right now, but... This guy has obviously been practicing hard and... Preparing to face off against these really strong players... And he's managing to prove himself worthy here of a chance. I mean, what, what's next? Is he going to go for the ASL? Is he going to uh, try out for one of these big tournaments? Some players are only ladder players. Some players can only do a performance like this on the ladder. I don't know if that is a good description of quickly. But I just want to throw that out there that just because he's able to perform here like this doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be able to do well in those big tournaments, but it is a very good sign. And I'll be watching carefully for more quickly replays to bring you his story uh, before he, you know, busts into the ASL or we see him in a qualifier or, you know, maybe in a group stage and everyone's wondering who that is. If you stick with this channel, you subscribe to me, You'll definitely know who this guy is before that ever happens. So that's it for this Daily Dose of Brood War episode, guys. And I'll see you tomorrow.